So I, I, mean, I remember one time I, I was walking along in, in a pretty open area and about 15 metres in front of me I saw a fairly large red belly black snake. And that snake then charged straight at me. And I thought, it, my mind, mind had trouble comprehending that because anyone who works with snakes knows we got to chase them down to catch them, right? They, they're Usually they're running away from us um, or sliding away from us. Uh, and so I, I, I was sort of... I was frozen in place as this snake came charging at me and then it got within about two metres of me and then disappeared down a rabbit burrow that I couldn't see that was in front of me. And so the, the snake wasn't charging me. It was heading for the nearest shelter site and it just happened to, to have to come directly towards me to do that. So so some of it, I think, is misinterpreting uh, what the snake's doing. When it, the, Some of it is um, some of it's family legend passed down. I've, I've had people tell me some stories that are clearly just you know not true. And when I point that out, they'll say, are you calling my granddad a liar? He was the greatest bloke in these parts and, you know, his memory's sacred. Okay, okay well, sorry about that. But more specifically, that rearing up stuff, I think we could make... I think the greatest lesson most of us could learn about that is that's not an aggressive animal. That's a scared animal. That's an animal that is reacting to a perceived threat. Uh, and so... so when they're rearing up like that and the flattening of the neck, sometimes dummy strikes, hissing, uh, all of that kind of stuff, that's a terrified animal that is hoping like hell you're going to go away rather than come any closer. So the biting is the, the last resort after that. And, and usually there's a few steps before that. There's, there's hoping it doesn't see you initially and then there's trying to run away. And if all those options aren't there and it's got to, it's got to give it that sort of defensive display. So I, I think it, it made a world of difference to my understanding and fear of those animals saying this is actually a scared animal it's not an angry animal it's not an aggressive animal this is an animal that's that's saying hey i'm scared of you uh, and i'm gonna i'm kind of saying to you don't come any closer or i might have to do something we'll both regret so so let's just you know let's just part company and head our own way so, but i think that's a really important distinguishing thing is just to say here's a scared animal it's no different to um, almost any vertebrate wildlife in Australia. You corner it, they're going to do something that shows their fear and, and, and sometimes they're going to be trying to put up a display that says, I am willing to defend myself if I've got to because that's the last resort for any of these animals. But, but seeing it as fear rather than aggression, I think is a really key way of interpreting that behaviour. It's the snake's equivalent of making yourself big to a bear. Totally, totally it is, yeah. And, and, and it's literally the same with that flattening of the neck. That's exactly what it's doing. It's, you know, it's trying to put up a, you know, it's trying to look bigger than it really is by doing that. And and a couple of our local snakes do a pretty good cobra impersonation in terms of flattening the neck. Tiger snakes in particular, but even, even browns and copperheads will do that neck flattening stuff. Uh, to try and look more larger and more fearsome than they really are. But once again, um, you know, I, I mean, the one thing that, the, the other thing that, that, that is perhaps not well understood is that every individual snake has its own personality. And so a, a, an individual snake's propensity to, to display in a, in a defensive way or whether or not it will ultimately bite if pushed that far. It varies greatly within individuals, and it also varies between species. And most people are aware that um, some species are more inclined to, to do the actual biting than others. Um, and, and that plays a role in snake bite statistics. So um, the, the, the group of snakes that has caused the most fatalities in Australia in the last 200 years is the brown snake genus. Um, and browns have a tendency when they're pushed and they're scared that they, they've got a tendency to bite. Uh, whereas the copperheads we're going to look at today tend to not do that. They'll put on a real show, but I know from catching them while they're putting on that show, they're, they're trying to get them to actually open their mouth and, and have a chomp is, is really difficult. And, 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 and milking a snake, it's kind of interesting. So, so you know, when you're milking a tiger, you, you got it by the scruff of the neck and you, you introduce the, the vial in front of the snake's face that you want it to bite. Generally speaking, and if they're warmed up, tigers are more than happy to oblige. They will chomp that thing and they'll, they'll go at it with gusto. Whereas with the copperheads, you know, you're kind of tapping them lightly on the nose with the vial and they just won't open their mouth. They're really good-natured snakes. And yet they will display, you know, I, I, I come in, if you corner them and don't let them get away, they will rear up and they will flatten the neck and that kind of thing. But, boy, you've got to push them really hard to get them to actually have a chomp. So, so there's individual differences between species and also with individuals on, on the likelihood that they'll actually sink the fangs in, literally. And we kind of think of...